Hi guys, this is an unfortunate video to make or it could help people in states and cities that have magazine restrictions. Uh, but also federally, we have to be prepared. There could be a push for 10 round magazine restrictions. And uh, obviously, most of us think that is completely unconstitutional. And uh, a, city a city shouldn't certainly be able to override both a state and uh, the Constitution, but it is what it is. Uh, I am not a lawyer. Things change all the time, uh, back and forth in California, etc. This is from 818, California, 10 Magazine, Colorado and Denver. Uh, Colorado was 15 round uh, limits. Uh, Denver had 10 round. I don't know if that's true for pistols or only uh, rifles. Connecticut, 10 rounds. Washington, D.C., 10 rounds. Hawaii, 10 rounds. Illinois by each city that very rapidly. That's awfully nice. So you just happen to, you know, turn on the wrong street. Massachusetts, 10 rounds. New Jersey, 10 rounds. New York, 10 rounds. For a while, they were enforcing seven. I believe that was struck down by the Second Circuit as unconstitutional. And back to uh, being able to load 10 plus one from what I know. But anyway, guys, I'm going to give you the top 15 firearms that are 10 round magazines or less. I'm going to give you five nine millimeters, four revolvers, a 10 millimeter and four 45s. Uh, so I'm going to give you what are my opinion, the best choices, what I would be looking at. And we go farther and farther into each category. Uh, kind of is more towards what I personally would pick or because you can get a plus two base and increase it from eight to nine or ten round magazines to get you to that 10, 10 plus one, ideally, uh, if that's what's allowed in your city, state, or if bad things happen and federally that gets happened. So while you might have something else, if you haven't lost it, um, you know, you might need something with less than a you know, 10 round or less magazine for legal carry purposes. Okay. So starting out car CW nine, you can get the regular version without night sights. And now it looks like they're making one with a front night sight. Kind of looks like a crappy Meprolite front night sight. Uh, but still some night sight on the front is better than none. I don't need a night sight rear, but I do really like to have a night sight front and they didn't offer this on the cheaper CW series car has multiple levels uh, price wise the CW series you could get relatively cheap they're very light very thin pistols this is like 0.9 inches wide they were the kind of the originals to do single stacks and start thinking about really concealed carry before states started making permits available cars guys um, once they're broken in are very good pistols and they have a very unique double action striker system. So it's long trigger pull, but light, like five and a half pounds. Like your world's most ideal worked on a revolver trigger. Um, very, very light. Way lighter than most revolver triggers, but still the long trigger travel. It's a nice crisp break. It's a very good, uh, unless you're very used to rapid fire strikers and riding the trigger reset. But... Um, kind of for newer owners, it's a safer system and it's definitely safer for new appendix carriers. Uh, and just for like newer shooters, this is safer than a striker fired pistol really because of the long trigger pull, even though the trigger weights the same. So something to consider with the car pistols, most don't come with a night sight, but this, they are now offering one version of the CW nine with the front night sight. Uh, I believe it's seven plus one. It's very light. Let's look at some stats. Seven plus one, three point six inch barrel, 0.9 inches wide, and guys, very light. You're looking at 17.7 ounces, so it's a very light carry. Uh, and guys, once you go from like 17 ounces to like 20, 21, most people can handle the recoil better. But for carry, lighter is better. So that's kind of up to your um, training level. Keep that in mind. You could put an eight-round magazine in it that um, car sells, guys, and one company does make a plus one base. So you could do that. The highest you could get, as far as my knowledge, would be using the longer eight-round magazine that comes in one of their other 
They're longer handled firearms. Put a plus one base on it. That would get you up to nine plus one. PPS M2 has six, seven, and eight round magazines. If you get a couple of versions come with all three magazines, that's awfully nice, especially for smaller people. So you could dictate the height and grip length to your personal needs for carry. Uh, maybe, you know, six, seven plus one in the pocket. Uh, work environment, non permissive environment, and then A plus one for carrier home. Uh, I don't think anyone makes any base plate extensions. Let me know, guys, if there's something out there reliable uh, that can be done. But a PPS M2, there was an early version with kind of the glow sights fluorescent. Those are, aren't great. Some have had problems falling out, um, but they're decent. Um, but now they offer this version with the excess night sights, the great F8. Very good excess sights. So this is one of my favorite single stacks. I don't own single stacks, nine millimeters, never have. Uh, but if that's what I was limited to, the PPS M2 is pretty good trigger break. You know, single stacks don't have the best triggers, but um, it's pretty good. And a lot of newer woman shooters tend to prefer this. It's a little heavier. I think 21 ounces. Handles recoil a little bit better, and uh, ergonomically, the grip is great. Alternatively to this, uh, perhaps, guys, would be a PPQSC because it comes with 10-round magazines and possibly one longer magazine. I don't know if the restricted states, if it just comes with the 10-rounders. Again, if more sweeping unconstitutional federal laws are passed, would you be allowed to get a pistol that originally had higher capacity or was optional for higher capacity. I don't know. It seems like they're going to be even more restrictive than 1997. If it was I think the original crime bill, uh, the way they've written it and uh, you know, if they actually propose it. So keep that in mind. I'm going with pistols that are only available in 10 rounds or under next would be an M M and P shield 2.0. Now, if it was my version if it was my best choice, instead of the 3.18 inch barrel, I would get the four inch barreled uh, with fiber optic sights, possibly with the red dot. Unfortunately, it's not really milled for the better, newer micro compact red dots. From what I've been able to figure out, it's kind of their uh, really cheapish Sig Sawyer-ish uh, rebranded Romeo type um, red dot. So it is definitely not the best, I think with the plastic housing. That's really unfortunate. If you just got it with the fiber optic, the front's great and the rear, like green, I think, and the, the rear are rear, very weird, distracting orange. So you would have to change that. I checked one out a couple weeks ago and the rears are way too distracting for a carry pistol because you would be reconfirming. It's way too much clutter in the visual field, if you will. The shield a very good choice because you can do Plus two on the eight rounder might make it 10 rounds or it might only be a plus one on the eight round magazine, but on the plus on the seven round magazine, um, I, it does take it to nine. So I'm not sure if you could get a nine or a 10 plus one capacity. I'm not positive on that, but this definitely gets you up there. And the 2.0 is a really good pistol. Next would be the P365, 10 plus one, way to go. Night sights are good. Very, very functional. I've tested, never owned it, but tested it twice. A very good pistol that you can make really good long range hits on accurately, good fast, accurate shots, even though it's only a three inch barreled pistol or 3.1, I think. 3.1 inch barreled pistol, very light, I think 18 and a half ounces. Um, you know, my choice, even for pocket carry, because I'm a big guy, would be the XL, but the XL comes with 12 round magazines. So, you know, legally in the future, we don't know where that would be. I don't know if the XL is sold with uh, 10 rounders. I don't think so. Uh, just two weeks ago, Hellcat started being able to get a 10 round magazine. I don't know if it's actually like legal in California, probably not. Uh, but that's something to consider. I'm keeping them to 10 round magazines or under next up is the Glock 48 MOS. Now that the MOS version is out there, the Glock 48 MOS uh, with something like a 507C, now that the ACSS, if you could actually get that reticle, boy, that seems like that's a good way to go. I haven't really played with red dots too much yet, but I plan to, especially since I'm getting older. And it's the wave of the future. It's the wave of now, really, now that that ACSS reticle has come out. 
So the Glock 48, it's one inches wide, I think, 10 plus one already. I think Glock was kind of hedging their bets towards the future. Um, when they came out with the 43F and the Glock 48, I much prefer long and barrel ballistics and sight maniacs. So, and actually easier to carry if you're carrying appendix, it doesn't flop out as much. Longer barrel is actually better. So the Glock 48 MOS probably gets my top choice for single stack nine millimeters and I am not a Glock fanboy. All right, let's move into revolvers. I like more capacity uh, for a lot of reasons that I get into other videos, guys. Speaking of other videos, it'd be nice if you looked at some of the stuff I'm doing re recently, like MMA Quick Bites, my Learn 52 block series every Friday, 3D sucks and under small caliber pistol caliber suck with real gel data, with real street data, with real data, with tissue crush compared to other calibers. Guys, I handle and teach you more about ballistics than any other channel out there. No one even talks about tissue crush, which means blood loss, which means diastolic pressure loss, which is what you need to do. You can't assume you're going to get a lucky CNS shot. It happens so seldom. And my caliber versus capacity uh, video when that comes out, which talks about the best bugs and about uh, shooting statistics and so forth. Okay, let's go to revolvers. If you want a smaller, lighter revolver, the one I would choose for a primary pistol would be a 3-inch barreled SP-101 6-shot 327 Federal Magnum. Why 327? Because most revolvers, you only get five shots in 357 Magnum. You get that six shot with 327 Federal Magnum with 100 grain gold dots that get great expansion, great penetration, even from a 1 and 7 eighth LCR barrel. They're really flying out of a 3 inch barrel. This would be really good. I love 3 inch barreled revolvers. You can see that in my other videos for a heck of a lot of reasons ballistics, balance, uh, etc. So, sight radius. So if you needed a lighter revolver, but you wanted six shots instead of five, I think this would be the way to go. Stepping it up to seven shots, and in no particular order on these next three really, is a Smith & Wesson 686 Plus. Most of them come with two and a half inch barrels. I much prefer the three inch barrel for the much better ballistics, though two and a half isn't bad compared to two inch. It's a big step up ballistically speaking, guys. And, uh, you know, now we're getting into like 37, 37 and a half inch type ounces, but a 686 plus is certainly a beautiful revolver, especially here with the unfluted cylinder. All right, next up is the Taurus 692. And they did two short runs that I could tell earlier, the two and a half inch barrel. And now on their new website that's been updated, they are showing the two and a half inch barrel. It looks really beautiful. I test and evaluated the three inch barrel that's ported. I like three inch barrel ballistics with the porting compared to the two and a half inch. I don't know if it's gonna be a great increase or not, but certainly big time recoil reduction on when using really, really hot loads. So either way you choose to go, and this is quite a bit lighter compared to the Smith or the Ruger two and a half inch. This is 32 ounces labeled on their site now. Uh, and I believe the three inch is 35 ounces. So if you want lighter carry, but still seven round capacity, as well as the ability to change cylinders and shoot nine millimeter, it is a multi-caliber multi ammo Gaiden SHTF type revolver. Look at my unboxing video at like 200,000 views now. My full full review didn't even need, need to change the sights, not that much of a variation, a couple inches at 15 yards, making headshots, changing from 357 to nine millimeter. The Taurus 692, I think is a great revolver, a heck of a bargain. Uh, most Taurus are now made at their huge facility in Georgia, American made, quality control has vastly improved the last three years. And now with the Georgia plant, I think it's just getting better. Also, this is one of the models that you can uh, get your back to a lifetime warranty. You have to register within 30 days, only on certain Taurus models. All right, next, this very special Taylor edition Ruger GP 100 seven shot with the beautiful Altamont grips, the fiber optic uh, front sight, adjustable sights, three inch barrel instead of the more typical two and a half inch barrel. SKU 1782, I did review this, Ruger sent it to me, and boy, I loved it. 
I absolutely loved it. And, you know, if I was limited capacity and I was a revolver guy, seven shots, 357 Magnum, three inch ballistics, heavy enough that you could sort with Federal or Remington, screaming hot, old school, 125 grain, semi jacketed hollow points at about 1400 feet per second because Ruger barrels shoot faster than any other revolver barrels out there. Um, and I will stake that other than maybe the Manchurians because I have no ballistic data on those rare birds. So other than that, which are really a GP100 frame, if you didn't know that, GP100 shoot fast and they're built like tanks. All right, now 10 millimeter, the 10 millimeter choice for actual CCW carry because of weight and size would be the Glock 29 Glock 29, usually you would want like a base extension just to get your pinky on it. But you're looking at what? Under 27 ounces weight, 10 plus one, a 10 millimeter. This can even handle hot loads pretty darn well, even though it is a smaller pistol. Jim Cirillo was said to even carry Glock 29 and Glock 30s towards uh, the tail end. And um, just a great, great choice, Masad. Ayob also likes the Glock 30 and I believe the Glock 29 as well. And so, you know, especially if you lived up north and had to worry about predator defense, besides two-legged predator, but four-legged predator defense, lions, tigers, bears, oh my, uh, you know, a Glock 29 would be a great way to go. Ted Nugent carries his Glock 20 and or 29 all the time. I think he's basically, with the, but he's mentioned both, but the Glock 20 and the Nuge, if it's good for the Nuge, it's good for me. Okay, moving on to 45 AARP because you know I love bigger bullets. Springfield Armory's XDE. I reviewed the 9mm in a quick video in the past. Not mine, range gun. Uh, and uh, Langdon makes a version. So if I could afford it, I would go with the Langdon version. This is a DASA Auto with safety decocker. Um, I just would leave it decocked off safe would be the way to go with this pistol. Uh, I wish it was a longer barreled. They only make the longer barreled version on the nine millimeter, unfortunately, not in the 45, a 3.8 or 4.5 inch version like they do in the nine millimeters. It would be a lot better, but you know, it fits great. The 45 even, even fits better, a little thicker than the nine millimeter my hand. Uh, that's a great way to go with 45, uh, but limited capacity. Now, uh, I would choose the MMP 2.0 and 45, especially if you could get the performance 45 version. Again, you would need to get rid of that obnoxious orange rear. Even older people, Smith & Wesson, what the heck were you thinking? Leave the green front, get rid of that orange rear, and do a blocked out rear or something else. Uh, guys, carry pistols. I typically do want a front night sight. But, uh, you know, fiber optics, a lot of people like them. But really, I would like the 4-inch barrel. If I had the 3.3-inch barrel, a little bit longer barrel on the 45 compared to the 3.18 on the 9mm, which is necessary for 45 expansion, uh, guys. And really, under 3.6-inch, you really need a HST. I digress. But if you like 45, this may be the way to go. I think it's just under 26 ounces in the 4-inch barreled version. So it's still easy to carry and good ballistics. Okay, next up would be the CAR P45 or CW45. CW45, a little bit heavier, just a little bit, maybe a little bit better for recoil, but you can't change the sights on the CW series, or it's very, very difficult, put it that way. Uh, it's the cheaper series. P45, there is a version with night sights. Um, so if it wasn't too expensive, I would probably go that way. It's both uh, rear... And front night sights, they look like Meprolite True Dot, which are not the best, and they're usually sharp. They're not the biggest, brightest glow. But some night sights better than no night sights. So either the CW45 or P45. Guys, this is originally a 6 plus 1 pistol. You can use the 7 round magazines from the longer TP series uh, car pistols in it. But, guys, you can use... A seven round act mag without modification. I believe you can use a seven round shooting star, uh, old school shooting star magazines that are still available without modification. You can use an eight round shooting star magazine without modification. And you can use eight round uh, act magazines with slight modification, but just beveling the front edges. 
those can be used reliably. So this gets you the eight plus one, nine rounds in gun, the 45 that I like. If you watch my capacity versus caliber, caliber versus capacity video, going into way more detail on that. Next would be a light enough 1911 Commander to carry. Value for the money with everything it comes with. Guys, my top pick would be Fusion Firearms. Fusion Firearms can get a lot of things other pistols don't. Most importantly would be the uh, extended beaver tail grip safety and easily swappable, actually proper sized front sight so you could change out your front sight. That is most important. Ruger, uh, Metro Arms Classic, um, Springfield Armory, and Rock Island would be other choices, but you'd want not their um, GI version. You'd want something a little bit better for carry, in my opinion. And last but not least is a Glock 30 Gen F, Glock 30 SF, or Glock 30 S, much lighter. And Glock 30 S was pretty much made for SIS because they wanted 10 plus one. They wanted 11 rounds of 45 for all their gunfights, possibly even more. I don't want to say more than that.